so we are in Donetsk and you came here from very far away from Poland. It's not very far away. We are from Holland and we came here and you, you filmed me two years ago on position and it's 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 good that you're filming uh, filming me again so that I can tell the people that the, the article which came into the newspapers two years ago in the Netherlands, in the NRC and in the PZC and some other that I never claimed to be a NATO, uh, NATO officer I always was just no, a corporal and before that a soldier so let's just go to the beginning how did you make this decision to move from Holland to, to DPR the place where the war is going? well I've been driving a truck with fresh fish uh, for about 10 years, a little less and before that I was about four years in the Dutch army which is uh, in the coalition of NATO uh, we did some missions on, on, on NATO did a lot of missions on the Balkan, Yugoslavia it took me thinking, every, every war starts with a lie if you, you, you hear when, when Maidan started, you heard a lot about uh, Russian involvement in the Western media. And I was like, yeah, well, it's about 100 kilometers away from their own border, so aren't they allowed to operate in their own backyard? Okay, so you spent some time in the army of DPR. Uh, what is your experience? Have you seen there any uh, Russian uh, army there? I haven't seen any Russian troops because uh, the people I served with, they were, they were former taxi drivers, they worked in the mines, uh, they worked in hotels, they worked in bars and restaurants. They, they, they feel they are Russian, yes, but that's, that's a feeling. It's not because they have a Russian passport, it's not because they're in the Russian army. There were people which were Russian and they were serving here, but they were came in here like a volunteer, like I did. I haven't seen any Russian soldiers or commanders or the people here. If you talk to, to, to the grandpa from 96, which is living in the house next door, he feels himself Russian, although he has a Ukrainian passport. If you go to the people of Odessa, they feel themselves Russian although they are still living under uh, the regime or how to call it from, from Kiev it's it's for all people it's a feeling to be Russian so you came here two and a half years ago tell me, me what was your first impression of the Nesk Republic uh, <laughs> It was totally different because before I crossed the border I was thinking I was gonna need a helmet and a vest and that it was gonna be all out war here but the next day I didn't sleep really good the first night because I was checking the car standing outside and but actually it's just like a city you can compare it a little bit like Amsterdam or, or Den Haag or Nijmegen or People are going to their work from and to. Children are going to school. People are going to the market, buying their groceries. They are going to swim. They're having barbecues. They're getting married. They're... It's an all day life. Is there a war going on? Yes, there is. At first I was like, okay, I'm gonna walk here. I don't have the right documents. I'm gonna get into trouble, but uh-huh, you're Dutch. What are you doing here? And no, it's not. It's not like that. People are friendly here. They're, if you ask something, which amazed me, the first time I went to in a bus, and I went into the bus, and I was sitting in the back, and we were sitting in the bus like a can of sardines. But I needed to pay for my bus trip. You can just pouch on the back, on the shoulder, from the guy or the the woman or the girl sitting next to you and give your money and it goes in front of the bus and they pay it to the bus driver and then your change comes the same way back and you get your change back if you do that in the Netherlands 
they will at the next stop the guy will leave the bus and he will steal your money that's not the way it is here people here are actually in, in, in certain ways just people like just in the Netherlands or just in, in the States or they're just human uh, something which amazed me here is that they they're friendly in a kind of way that you cannot find in the Netherlands or in Europe if you go for the first time and, and you talk to somebody then they ah uh -huh, and you're here if somebody invites you in your house even if they don't have anything they will put anything on the table even if it's their last uh, pot of sauce or their last drink or and you can die in the Netherlands and your neighbor doesn't know you're dead for two three four months then and, and, and that's a different way here people will take care of their uh, family friends it's a different lifestyle yes it is do you speak any Russian by now well two and a half years ago when you interviewed me at the position I didn't speak ah, not at all I wouldn't say that but I can go around town now by myself without somebody helping me and I can I can talk I can I can help myself yeah I cannot write it's still like I can read a little bit but writing is very difficult because you have the different uh, letters in writing then 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 they are teaching at first so that's still like agab abacadabra it's 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 very difficult it, it's a very rich language for one word there can be 10 meanings the first words i learned weren't the best russian words and the first words my children spoke weren't the best russian words i they've learned and they shouldn't it's, it's a difficult language it, it is but we're getting around and so uh, do you regret your decision to move here are you uh, planning to go back to holland or not uh, no i'm not planning to go back because it, it actually I, I came here i didn't came here to make lots of money i came here out of kind of principle uh, out of out of uh, moral questions uh, if i go back i would i would uh, lie to myself what for i came here because i i, I know I have put my children in a difficult position. Uh, if I go back, then I would start to confirm to the Western system again and pay my taxes so my tax money can go up to Den Haag, Brussels, NATO, Washington again while they are in my opinion still starting all those wars all over the globe wherever they started with lies I don't care they did it here I don't know what's coming from my decision but whatever will happen it will be it will be good it, it will be I did the right thing it was the right thing to do. What would you like to tell to Dutch people, or actually, you know, all people in Western Europe? Like, would you advise them to come here to the Netsk Republic to see everything with their own eyes? Uh, I do not actually want to advise them to come here, but I would like to advise them that if they believe that what's being said in the Western media, in 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 the in the, in the television in the in the newspapers what's been written written if they believe just by the fact that it's being said on the television or just by the fact that it's being written it's not necessarily true because a lot of people they heard that Russia is only using propaganda at their television at their media but most of the times they heard that at their own uh, national 
television or at their regional newspaper. So propaganda works two ways. If you if you want to know how something works or what's true, go there and see it by your own eyes. And otherwise, keep your opinion for yourself, please. <laughs>